Hi, everybody. My name is Samin. I'm a compulsive overeater. I weigh and measure three meals per day. I call it into my sponsor. I don't eat in between meals no matter what. And abstinence is the most important thing in my life, no matter what, no matter who, no matter when, where, why, or how. I got my abstinence at all costs. And I've been um, been in this program for a little over 16 years. Pass that to me. Close the door, please, baby girl. Thank you. And I love you too, baby. That was my daughter. She's gone. She's going to a birthday party. Um, I've been doing this program for 16 years. 16 years. I've been, I have, so I have 16 years and some change. And that's a, that's a number. And that's, that's good. I walked in, I was 404 pounds. My last weigh-in um, was under 200 pounds. I've been under 200 pounds since I was under 200 pounds, right? So um, the way I came in, and I've been as low as 168, which I look, I don't look well. It doesn't fit who I, who I am. Although I, my brain wanted it, I wanted to go like to 150. I'm like, let's do it. If we're going to do it, let's do it. I'm sorry I'm moving. I'm trying to get the light right. I do documentary film, so I'm like, this is not a good scene. This is not see the back of a, a painting and uh eh, but this it is what it is so i walked in i was um 20 28 29 when i came into the rooms i still lived at home with my mother um i wasn't going anywhere i come from a a home of dysfunction my mother was a drug addict um there was my father was absent he was a drug addict which when I look at that, it's good that he was absent as well because I would, wouldn't want to deal with two parents that were drug addicts. But and I, that's how I found a way to be like, okay, I can be grateful that he disappeared because he he wasn't going to offer me anything. So he left, and um, my life was it was it was an interesting life. Was my mother's house was the party house, so when people were down on their luck, they would come stay with us, and it was a lot of dysfunction, a lot of dysfunction. But the one thing that I, I respect and love, 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 that she put me in schools downtown. I'm from Manhattan, born and raised in Manhattan. And I lived in Harlem. And I say that like as if everybody knows it. But, you know, anyone who knows New York, Manhattan is, if you want to be anywhere in New York, it's, it's no other place than Manhattan. There's a couple other boroughs that people argue about, but it's, I lived in Manhattan. And she shipped me downtown. And when I say downtown, why that was important was because life was normal when I went downtown. I went to school and I got to be around two parent families and, you know, lawyers and doctors and columns in the middle of the living room and cars and dogs. And it was like, what, what, <laughs> what is this? But I had to come back home and she was not capable because she was an addict to give me the stability. So I would go home and it would be no electricity and it would be no toilet paper and things like that. So I grew up in that type of, in America, it was like, really, no toilet paper? Got to figure things out. And the only thing that I um, could look at was that food was the thing I could control because there was no stability and there was no control and there was no normalcy in the home. But food, I could control. And, and I also questioned my memory, like, well, how did you get to be 400 pounds if you didn't have money and food? And I don't know. I don't know, but I know I ate my pain. And I ate my pain and I ate my pain. And I, w I ate because I couldn't speak up about things. Right? And I'm, what came up for me is when I first realized that I was like big, like really big, I had to go to a nutritionist because I was getting leg surgery, which I eventually got. I got this leg surgery and this, this, this nutritionist had to take me downstairs. I was in a hospital with joint diseases famous hospital she took me downstairs because i i was 350 that's what the scale said but she wanted the accurate weight so she took me down to the freight area like what trucks are backing up and you hear like the beep beep and it's this massive digital scale when i get on a scale which they weigh i don't know what they weigh on these scales and my the scale went to 394 and that was the first time that i realized that i was over 350 394. So now the goal was I would never be 400 pounds. You know, I'm not, I'm fat and I'm big, but I'll never be 400 pounds. And I'm only five foot seven. So she went up, she wrote this, this note and she wrote on my file, morbidly obese. Now at that time, I didn't know what either of the words meant. I didn't, I didn't know the definitions. So I, when I got home, I looked them up and I was like morbid. And it was like grossly, frightenedly, you know, and with, with morbid, grotesque. And I was like, really? 
and it said obese. And it was like, of course, fat. And I'm putting those together. And, I'm, and I got upset with her. And I would love for that to be the moment that was my gray sheet journey. Like, I read those words and I looked at them and I just felt so empowered, but I didn't. I made it about her. And a few years later, I was looking at getting a gastric bypass. And I went to go get the gastric bypass, went to get it, and the scale was 404 pounds. And the doctor was like, oh my God, you don't look like you weigh 404 pounds. And he took me out in the hall and he says, you know, to the secretary, hey, Melissa, how much do you think he weighs? So then it's like, guess the weight of the fat guy, right? And she's like, um, 270? No, 404. She's like, oh my God, he doesn't look like, hey, Deborah, how much do you think he weighs? Um, 302? No, he's 404. Now, like in that story, today, who I am today, I feel pain and I'm sad for him, for me then. But then I didn't know how to feel anything. You know, I can think back and like thinking about it now, if I saw it in a movie, I'd probably cry. Like, oh my God, is that really happening? But then I just was numb to it. I was numb. And he said, well, do you want to do the surgery? And the surgery would last for a year. You would lose all this weight in a year, but then you have to diet and exercise. And I was like, wait, if I, you know, connect my, my esophagus to a two ounce pouch and that goes straight to my intestines, I should never have to exercise ever. You know, I'm 400 pounds. I'm doing this insane surgery. I should never have to exercise ever. And thank goodness I had that, at least that type of, um, I don't know if it's arrogance or what it is. I just was like, that just doesn't make sense to me. And he was like, well, it's the only way you're going to do it. You can't do it any other way. You, you're here, you, you know, it's 20, it's never going to happen. And that began my journey. I think, no, I was not 20, I was about 25. And that began my journey. And I started doing water aerobics. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to prove you wrong, man. And it started and I started to talk to people and I started doing water aerobics because I couldn't work out because my knees hurt, my hips hurt. And um, I met somebody at the, at the pool and they, and they saw me working and I was losing and gaining and, you know, I'd lose 10 and gain back five. And I was doing that dance. And, and the, this guy, his name was Larry. He said, you need to go to Gray Sheet. I had never heard of it. And he said, you have an issue, you know, with food. And he explained it to me, which didn't make sense to me because I'm like, who? Who has an addiction to food? You know, I know I have dope fiends in my family. I have alcoholics. I have crackheads. I have all of that. I understand that. But food, we need food. He was like, no, you have an allergic reaction to sugars. And he broke it down to me. And it was the strangest thing. And I didn't listen to him. And I went on a fast with this woman and from California. And she was like, you should go on a fast with me. And I did this liquid fast. And I had to break the fast. And I ended up back at him. And he says, you're going to die someday. You know, you, you're going to die and it's because you're arrogant and you're stupid. And I'm telling you what you need to do. And he did a whispering yell. Like how I talk to my daughter at times, where it's like, I want to get your attention, but I don't need anybody else in our business. And it was sincere and it went to my bones. And he says, you're arrogant and you're going to die. I had never heard somebody say, you're going to die. And I listened. He said, you need to go to Great Sheet. And here's where the meeting is. And I said, I'll go. He's like, shake my hand. And I shook his hand, like, shake my hand as a man. And it was just so not real. Like, I'm thinking in film, if I saw that in the film, I'd be like, that's not real. That's stupid. And I shook his hand, and me shaking his hand, just like, it was real to me. And I went to the meeting the next day. And from that day on, I didn't know that that was the last day that I would eat everything that I don't eat. You know what I mean? Like, I would, that would be the last day. Because you don't get to call it. You don't get to call it. And I, and I went to a meeting the next day and I have never not been in this program. I had never counted days again. You know what I mean? I, I count, counted day one the next day because I didn't eat something because it was frozen burn and freezer burn, freezer burn. And I told my sponsor, he was like, oh, well, yesterday would have been your day one, but now today's your day one. I was like, what? You mean I went home and I didn't eat all the things? That? He was like, don't worry about it. You, you, you'll be fine. And because he told me I'll be fine, I was fine. I was like, okay. And that was over 16 years ago. And just like my life, my life became 
a life worth living. I, like, I didn't come here for all the things that I've received in this program. I didn't come here to go back to school and, you know, get an education and get a master's degree. I didn't come here to meet my wife that I did and have a, a child. I didn't do that. I didn't come here to have my wife pass away and not eat over it. And, you know, and to actually become a professor teaching at a school that before I came in, two years before I came in, I sold drugs like four, four blocks away from the school that I was actually a professor at. Like those type of things, that's not what I came here for. I came here to lose weight and because everything else in my life was, was, was fine. That's how I, I had it. That's the level of um, insanity I dealt with. That's the level of, and I have no issues like calling myself. I'm like, I know I'm as insane as it comes. And, and, and I just saw that my life was so out of order. And, I, and being abstinent, I don't know if you saw The Matrix. The Matrix with Neo, and he takes the pills, and it, everything is slow. And he can, abstinently, I can look at my life slow. Before it was coming like a blur, and I just, days just meshed together. And, and me being in this program for 16 years, I've been able to look at my life and decide what, like, like the bullets, he dodges the bullets. I can look at my life and say, this works. This makes sense. I'm going to do this. I'm just not going to eat over that. That's painful. That sucks. That's beautiful. And it's, it's all like lattice, right? It's like my life is interwoven through all these day-to-day -day moments of beauty and horror and, you know, and like really horrible things is to be holding my daughter and the doctor says, no, she, she's dead. And it's my, talking about my wife. And what do I do? It's like, what? You eat? No, you don't eat. I, I call my sponsor. And then my sponsor calls some people. And next thing I know that there, there's gray sheeters at the hospital. And then we, gray sheeters at my home. And, and um, it's been questioned like, well, why, well, why didn't you eat? How could you not eat? And I was like, well, my brain just like, you don't eat no matter what. You hear the, it's like a mantra. It's like a hypno, hypnotic chant. Like, you know, bibbidi bobbidi boop. We know all already, we know that's from Cinderella, right? We know bibbidi bobbidi. And she turned the mice into horses. Saying I don't eat no matter what, and I eat no matter what, every day, all day, you know, while I'm driving, you don't eat no matter what. Somebody cuts me off. I want to get out of the car and attack. And I'm like, that's insane. But it, it comes up and I, you, don't, you don't eat over that. And this one dies and I graduate. Oh my God, it's a graduation. That's a celebrate. I guess, well, how do you celebrate? Well, I would like some nice shoes. Let's go out and eat. Mm. And five minutes. Five minutes, thank you very much. So that's just how my life has been for the last 16 years. It's just been this wave of, of life and it doesn't have anything to do with food. And I heard that when I first came in, and that sounded like, <laughs> sounded like their stuff. Like that's 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 for you people, you know. It was very separate. Like that's for you people. Yeah, I got you. Got your life together, and but you don't know my life. And as I did the program, I was like, that's just situations that you can easily just overcome or ignore, or you know, engage in. And I've seen enough people who engaged in the sadness, and things happen, and things happen. But I'm crystal clear that none of it has anything to do with what goes in my mouth. Like, nothing. I mean, I could talk about the president, and we don't talk politics. I could talk about the governors. I could talk about the this, and I could talk about my daughter's school, and I could talk about the politics of that, and, you know, being a single dad, and what that means, and all the craziness. And it's there. And I'm not committed to, to protesting. You know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going out in the rain. I'm not doing the things. So I don't complain about it and I don't eat over it. And I didn't know that that's what I spent the majority of my life was eating over things that I saw that I didn't have the power to handle. And because of the, the Neo power of me being, I can handle everything. And a lot of times my handling is like, yeah, yeah. Let me, let's table that. I need to come back to that. I need to not, because it's urgent to you doesn't mean it's urgent to me. And so I need to slow that down. And I had to get a voice. And then I had to learn boundaries, which I learned in this in, in meetings from people who had boundaries. And they would say, like, yo, Samin. Because I'm like, hey. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm it down a little bit. And 
you know, in their way. That that's that's how I do it. That's they 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 were more gentle, but I got it, and I learned that way. I didn't have boundaries, you know. I didn't have these things, and now I have boundaries, and I teach my daughter. It's a that is a skill to be learned, you know. You need to learn boundaries, and I teach my daughter boundaries. You you don't just come in my room. You don't have to. You have to knock, and you have to be accepted. And I get how I teach her that is that I knock on her door. And she says, come in or not come in. You know what I mean? I don't knock and twist. I knock and wait for her to say, come in. And I go in. It's just those little things that, um, that matter. I didn't have that type of freedom. I had a door that was always open, could be opened anytime. Um, I had things that were missing. Like, mom, where's my... And she would help me look for it. You know, that's the type of incense. She would help me look for something that she stole. And um, I can laugh about it now because I get the addiction and I get who she was and I'm so, I mean, she's passed away 10 years ago and I, I was able to forgive her for everything because I got it. You know, I got that you're an addict and it's not even you. It was the, the thing, the ism. So we had a great closing relationship before she died and I was able to know that I had, which was important to me because when I first came in, I was like, oh, she's my enemy. She's the worst, you know, I, I, and, and then really I got like, oh, you're an addict just like I am. I didn't know I was an addict. And I learned that I was. So um, Charles Dickens like, was the past, the present, and the future, the experience, strength, and hope. My, um, my hope is that, and, I, and I'm going to sound mild. It's like, I, I should say, I want to be absent. I'm, this, I actually, maybe arrogantly so, have no doubt that I do the things every single day to be abstinent that I will be absent. So it's not a surprise to me. It's not like it's anyone else's doing. I mean, higher power is in me, but I literally take the actions every day to know that I'm going to be absent. And I have the batteries with the, the scale in the car and I have the, all right, bye-bye, bye, thank you. One minute, Samin. Thank you, girlfriend is taking um, my daughter to the, the, the birthday party before the party, yeah, so. You know, I do the things, right? And, and as long as I do the things that need to happen, there's no doubt that it's going to happen. I don't, I'm not shocked. There's no surprise for me. It's, I mean, things can happen. Like, I don't, but I don't believe in emergencies, right? I'm like, eh, it's, just, uh, it's not an emergency. It's your urgency. It's not really an emergency. Oh, I, I, I'm out to eat and I don't know what to do. That, my sponsor has never heard me do that. I'm very straight. Things happen. It's like, oh, that doesn't work. This doesn't, this is not what I ordered. That doesn't work. I'm sending it back. Or I need three of those and I have the money for it. You know what I mean? That's to me, I, I don't believe in the emergencies of it. And I've traveled throughout Europe and for 34 days, my daughter and I went out two years ago, abstinent. We landed, got in our hotel. My daughter knew, what, we're going to the market, right? Yes. I have to go and take care of that. She knew it. There's a story about us being in Marrakesh and if the food came out and it wasn't enough. And she said, it's not going to be enough for both of us. So here's the deal. You eat that, and then you take me out to a restaurant? I was like, that's exactly what we're going to do. That's per and that's because she knows that I put the gas mask on, on me first. Or the, the oxygen mask, not the gas mask. I put the oxygen on me first, and then I take care of her. And that's, that's how I do. Thank you very much. I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to do this program one day at a time. I get to do this program. And then I get to have a life beyond my wildest dreams. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if I leave my number or, or what. Okay, no. All right, so I'll just stop. Thank you. I don't need no matter what, and that's just for today.